At the center of the Hofburg Palace in Vienna lies the treasury in which precious objects are housed to this day. They document over a thousand years of European history and the former glory of the House of Habsburg. The unique crown of the Emperor Rudolf II is a potent symbol of their claim to power. This magnificent example of goldsmith work served as Rudolf's substitute for the imperial crown housed in Nuremberg. In 1804, the Emperor Francis I chose the crown as the insignia of the newly proclaimed Austrian Empire. However, it was never actually worn in the way depicted here. Another highlight of the secular treasury are the insignia of the Holy Roman Empire. Initially housed at Aix la Chapelle and Nuremberg, they were brought to Vienna to save them from Napoleon's advancing army. They are the most important insignia to have survived from the Middle Ages and include, among other objects, the imperial coronation robes with the unique coronation mantle, the imperial gospels, the imperial cross, the holy lance, and last but not least, the imperial crown. The latter was used to crown the kings and emperors of the Holy Roman Empire from 962 until the end of the empire in 1806, when Napoleon's advance forced the emperor, Francis I, to proclaim its demise. Napoleon's wars are also the reason why the treasures of the Order of the Golden Fleece are now in Vienna, having been removed from Brussels for safekeeping. In 1477, the Emperor Maximilian I married Mary of Burgundy, and since then, the head of the House of Habsburg was always also the Grand Master of the Order of the Golden Fleece. The treasure includes the chain of arms worn by the Herald, the jeweled cross on which every new knight still swears his oath of allegiance. The liturgical vestments of the Order are among the finest embroideries ever executed in the West. In addition to these symbols of power, the secular treasury also contains a plethora of precious objects, among them the crown of the Hungarian magnate Stefan Bochkoy, the diamond sabre of the Emperor Charles VI, and a huge garnet called La Bella. The magnificent Colombian emerald, weighing 2,680 carats and skillfully cut by Dionisio Miseroni in 1641 in the shape of a small lidded receptacle, has long been celebrated. The value of two legendary objects was such that the imperial family declared them inalienable heirlooms of the House of Habsburg. One is the huge agate bowl, believed to be the Holy Grail. The other is the Einkorn, falsely identified as the horn of a unicorn. It is, in fact, the tusk of a narwhal. Until the end of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the private jewellery of the Habsburgs formed an important part of the treasury. It included, among other pieces, the diamond crown worn by the Empress, the celebrated Florentine, an enormous diamond weighing 133 carats, as well as countless necklaces and tiaras. In 1918, the last Austrian emperor and his family took these private objects with them when they were forced into exile. The Habsburgs were always great patrons of the Capuchins, a Catholic order. In 1618, the Empress Anna founded a Capuchin monastery on what is now the Neuermarkt, a square in central Vienna. It came to include the imperial family's most important burial place, the crypt that still contains the sumptuous imperial sarcophagi. They are, however, merely the outer covers housing the actual coffins. Since the 17th century, the keys to the sarcophagi of members of the imperial family were placed in the treasury and collected in time in a cupboard, especially made for this purpose in the 19th century. The connection between the imperial family and the Catholic Church was always very close, a fact reflected in the impressive holdings of the ecclesiastical treasury. 
Today, the ecclesiastical treasury is displayed in rooms and cupboards commissioned for the holdings of the secular treasury in the middle of the 18th century by the Empress Maria Theresa. The collection includes over a thousand reliquaries, the oldest of which date from the Middle Ages. Among them are the so-called monile, or reliquary pendant of Charlemagne, and the reliquary cross of King Louis of Hungary, both of which contain several small particles of the true cross. Other highlights of the ecclesiastical treasury are the sudarium of Saint Veronica and the reliquary containing a nail from the cross. Together with chalices, monstrances, religious paintings, and the rich holdings of liturgical vestments, they form one of the most important collections of its kind in the world. In the treasury in Vienna, history and art, myth and science, secular and ecclesiastical objects are combined in abundance in a way unrivaled by any other treasury in the world.